I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. We'll show them, won't we, boy? We sure will. Now, first of all, lad, we've got to get all these medieval ideas out of your head. Clear the way for new ideas. Knowledge of man's fabulous discoveries in the centuries ahead. Now, that'll be a great advantage, boy. Advantage, indeed. <laughs> if the boy goes about saying the world is round, they'll take him for a lunatic. The world is round? Yes, yes, that's right. And it also uh, goes a-round. You mean it'll be round someday? No, 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 it's round now. Man will discover this in centuries to come. And he will also find that the world is merely a tiny speck in the universe. Universe? Ah, you're only confusing the boy. Before you're through, he'll be so mixed up, he'll, he'll be wearing his shoes on his head. Man has always learned from the past. After all, you can't learn history in reverse. It, 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 it's confusing enough, for heaven's sakes. <gasps> all right. All right. <laughs> Oh, above all the idiotic guy, blow me to Bermuda! Where, where did he go? To Bermuda, I suppose. Where's that? Oh, an island way off somewhere that hasn't been discovered yet. Will he ever come back? Who knows? Who knows anything? Take a look at this video of the trajectory of a launched rocket. Think about the path that the rocket follows. Instead of moving in a straight line, the rocket following a curved trajectory. This isn't a mistake, you will see the exact same thing in every other video of a rocket launch. Even so, it doesn't seem to make sense. Rockets are supposed to go into space, right? So wouldn't it make more sense if they went straight up in a line, rather than following a parabolic path? They'd reach space much faster that way, it would seem. There must be a reason, because rocket scientists tend to be pretty smart, so, why do they not go straight up? Hello and welcome to Question Spot. Today we will explore the answer of, why is a rocket trajectory curved after launch? So let's get started. Short answer, because they want to get into the orbit around the Earth using as little fuel as possible. Wait a minute. Now, do you hear what their excuse is for orbiting the whole Earth before going to space? We all know that the fastest way from point A to point B is in a straight line. That's like saying when we get on an airplane, the airplane circles the airport before it takes off onto its destination. Or when I get in my truck in the morning, I circle the block before I actually get on the highway and go to work. Come on now, people. Do you even comprehend how ridiculous that sounds? Saving fuel. And I'll tell you what's even more ridiculous than that. You got these globe tards that'll make these videos and put them on YouTube trying to explain that that's why the rockets curve on launch. Knowing, knowing good and well that they've never even seen a rocket in person or been beside a rocket or know anything about a rocket, but they'll go Google their information and then put out a little silly, silly video like you see here, 15 minutes and 47 seconds long, trying to explain a lie that they've been lied to and they have no clue what they're talking about. They're just giving you information that was handed down to them through a space agency. So anyways, I'm here to show you why rockets curve when they launch. Check it out. So they, they send these rockets up, but they don't really go anywhere. Yeah, if you back. watch the trajectory, right. it's never straight. It's never straight. It's never straight. Where are you going? Did you know that all rockets are launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida? 
Now what's beside Florida? The ocean. You know what's in the ocean beside Florida? The Bermuda Triangle. Now why don't they launch rockets from Texas, Colorado, or Kentucky? Because there's no ocean there for them to fall back into. And that is why they launched from Cape Canaveral, so they can drop it right in the Bermuda Triangle and nobody ever know, nobody ever see, because nobody goes there. Now space shuttles, they do a little different, but it's still pretty simple how they pull it off. You ever notice once the shuttle gets up so high, its boosters fall down into what? The ocean, the Bermuda Triangle. And then the shuttle, which is not really a space shuttle at all, it's just an airplane, big goofy looking airplane made to look like a shuttle, and then when it comes back, nobody notices how it just looks like an airplane landing on a runway. Check out the wheels. See these little doors on these wheels? And this sp stuff is supposed to say, stay sealed in, in a vacuum. Yeah, come on now, people. And notice how that paint job is still perfect, still perfectly white. No burn marks at all on it from supposedly coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> It's time to wake up. Low me to Bermuda! Where did he go? To Bermuda, I suppose. So, as you can see, the owl is wise. He's trying to teach the child the truth. But the wizard, which is a devil, is trying to lie to him. And then what's he say? Flob me to Bermuda and takes off like a rocket into the sky and curves off just like you see real rockets do. And the reason they do, because there is no outer space, there's a firmament, there's nowhere to go. So it's just a little firework show to trick you and make you believe all this stuff. None of you have ever seen a rocket. You might've stood there in Florida and watched one go up in the air, but you've never seen one in space. Only on TV did you see one in space, not in real life with your own eyes. Wake up, people. Stop believing this bull crap. Those rockets go straight into that Bermuda Triangle. That's why they make up all these myths and don't want you around there. And they say all these ships are wrecked in there and all these planes have fell in there. Only thing that's fell in there is their rockets and their bull crap. Sorry to tell you, sorry to tell you. The only thing that's been to space is your imagination. Blow me to Bermuda! Where did he go? To Bermuda, I suppose. Where's that? Oh, an island way off somewhere that hasn't been discovered yet. Now, remembering that that movie is from 1963, check this out. During the early 1960s, Bermuda played a crucial role in the United States lunar programs and other space flight missions. Hmm. Cooper's Island, Bermuda. Cooper's Island is part of the chain which makes up Bermuda. It is located in St. George's Parish in the northeast of the territory. The island has been used by many United States government agencies, having been the property of the U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force, and U.S. Navy from 1942 during World War II to 1995. It also is home to a NASA space tracking station recently renovated in 2018. You'll notice in 2018, around 2018 is when they started this rocket stuff up again. Now let's take a look at how close the relationship is between NASA and Bermuda. As an integral part of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's manned and space flight network, the Bermuda Station played a vital role in the United States Apollo Luna program and other flight missions. The Cooper's Island Station was located on the southeastern tip of Bermuda. 600 miles in the Atlantic from the U.S. East Coast. Radar dishes and helical antennae were used to track anything from spacecraft to sparrows. Because of its location in relation to Cape Kennedy, Florida, the Bermuda Station had a dual-purpose role for the manned space flight network. At the time of the launch, the primary mission of the station was to provide trajectory data to the computing facilities at the Goddard Space Flight Center. Computations based on data obtained during the final portion of powered flight were used to confirm the orbital go, no-go decision. Bermuda normally acquired the spacecraft at approximately three minutes after launch. Bermuda also played a role in shuttle launches. 
on the right hand side. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. You can hear the call out. Trajectory is nominal. Bermuda, nominal trajectory. And we've heard call out Bermuda. That means Bermuda ground station has the signals from the second stage of the Dragon and Falcon 9. Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to today's ceremony at NASA's Bermuda Tracking Station. Uh, my name is Jeremy Eggers. I'm with NASA's Office of Communications. And without further ado, it's a great, great honor for me to introduce our U.S. Consul General here in Bermuda, Constance Dearman. Good morning, everyone. What a wonderful day to be able to share with you. I'd like to especially welcome Deputy Premier Roban. Thank you for being here. Sir John Swan, thank you for being here. Uh, Director Sam Shamimi, we're delighted that you're able to visit us from NASA headquarters. Dr. Bruce Shelton, Ms. Laurie Garver, Deputy Administrator of NASA, Ms. Al Cundis, Deputy Associate Administrator, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and thank you for being here on this day in the most beautiful part of Bermuda, the Cuba's Island Nature Reserve. Today marks a combination of two years of negotiating between NASA and the Department of Airport Operations. However, the NASA and Bermuda government are certainly no strangers. During the 1960s, NASA developed a tracking station at Cuba's Island to support its national space program. Now, as you can see, Bermuda and NASA has been affiliates since the early 60s when they first started sending rockets up because they planned us out from the beginning. As you can see right here, you see the Bermuda Triangle and then you see the island of Bermuda. Now, 600 miles away, right over here, you have Cape Canaveral, Florida, where they do all the space launches from. Ain't that awful convenient? 600 miles away, and the only thing out in that ocean is a little island called Bermuda. Am I painting the picture clear enough for you now? You can go watch all the space launches you want to in Florida, but you can't see 600 miles away to where that rocket or shuttle is curving off to. NASA has been deceiving you with this trickery since the 1960s, people. It's time to wake up. They even show you in your little programs you watch. They show you the truth. Blow me to Bermuda! Where, where did he go? To Bermuda, I suppose. Where's that? Oh, an island way off somewhere that hasn't been discovered yet. It's a, a group of social criminals. These people in the space program. Nassholes, I call them. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing. 